the law. How many of them were there? Since you're under sin, keep going. But under obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in newness of life. So now that we're under grace, I can be free to live by the promptings of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me and always has my best interest in mind. And now I'm free instead of trying to go back to my checklist on all 613. And you know before 9 o'clock in the morning, we already violated 100 of them. Instead of trying to live by that, I now can live being sensitive to Holy Spirit directing, Holy Spirit prompting, and Holy Spirit leading. So that I did so now. So we are dead to what? The law, and now live under grace. All right, so now, now, just read this now. Believers living under grace are controlled, are dominated, are ruled by sin. All right, let's read it together in context. Believers living under grace are not controlled, dominated, and or ruled by sin. Please give God a hand of praise for that right now. We're not dominated. We're not ruled. We're not controlled by sin. So, so that we're clear about this because now we're dead to the law. So here's a question. So if we're not dominated by sin, if we're not ruled by sin, if we're not controlled by sin, do we still sin? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some folks are sinning even more. So that is what so does the system. So so let's go back in here and get this straight. So the spiritual principle number one, let's lay this out for us now. So believers still sin, and we're going to address a few reasons why today, and then we'll address this for the rest of the month as well. So, so let's be clear. We are now free from the domination and the rule and the mastery of sin, but we still sin. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. So let's, read, let's, 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 let's make this confession together. I am living an abundant, amazing, amazing anointed Christian life. If, if, you, if you are embracing that, please give God a hand clap of praise right now in the name of the Lord. I, I don't let circumstances cause you to think differently. Don't let situations cause you to think differently. Don't let trouble cause you to think differently. You make this confession that God, that Jesus' love was, that was shed for you so we can live an abundant, amazing, and anointed life. We ought to give God at least one more hand clap of praise because we're living an amazing, abundant, and, and, oh, and amazing life and anointed life. Now, here's the point. But there is often, we talked about last week, a disconnect between what we see and what we say. We've been confessing things we haven't seen. Flower. We've been saying things we have not seen. Confession means saying again the same things, agreeing we're saying the same things Jesus would say. How many of us have seen everything we see? No, because there's a disconnect. Oftentimes between what we say and what we see. So, so what I'm offering now is by this teaching about the Holy Spirit is that we ought to have a stronger connection between what we say and what we see. That I'll not, I'll, I'll not be a disconnect. I'll not, I'll not be saying this and not, not seeing this. I, I, if when I'm saying according to the word, I ought to be seeing it. And you would have to agree with me that even though sometimes we are saying things according to the word, we're still not seeing it. Amen. I said we're saying things according to the word and still not seeing it. I'm saying we stand in the court of the word. Read the scripture. Even give God, in case God forgot, we went and gave him the verse and the book. God, I am coming to you on Psalm 23, verse 1. In case you don't know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We'll stand the verse. And not always hear what it says. There's a disconnect. And I'm telling you, this time the Holy Spirit closes the gap between what we say and what we see. So, so why are we not living this amazing life continuously? And we talked about last week, this extraordinary, this extra bad news, extraordinary news, and extraordinary news. Extra, the, the extra bad news was we can't live it. The extraordinary news, news was, let's read this together, the Holy Spirit lives an abundant, amazing, anointed Christian life. How? Through believers. We don't have the willpower to, open it, to overcome problems. But the Holy Spirit through us does. We don't have the determination to overcome problems. Holy Spirit through us does. We don't even have the strength, the self-control to overcome all the, the sins control. But the Holy Spirit through us does. We talked about it already. 
Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon believers. Acts 1 8. You see, the Holy Spirit should have come upon you. We spend some, and this is what most of us have lived, we said already before. How many of us know the Holy Spirit lives inside of us? That's a beautiful thing. How to give God a just a hand that prayer. Holy Spirit lives inside of us. But how many know that just because you got something in your wallet right now doesn't mean you're gonna use it? You can have, just because you got it, I mean, there, there's another level got to use it. And yet, praise God, Holy Spirit lives within us. We got scriptures right here, Romans 8, 11, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you right now. Hallelujah. You know right here from 1 Corinthians 5, 3, 16, don't you know your, that your, 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 you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? He put his Holy Spirit in believers. Part of the, how many ever had a, 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 a start a new job in here? How many ever, how many ever started a new job? Well, there's a, there's a benefit package that you receive when you start a new job. Most of us are only concerned about how much you're going to pay. But there's, there's, a, there's a benefit package. Sometimes that package is just sweet. And even if the money is not there, you got some benefits to take care of that outweigh what the seller would be. And what and I'm offering here is that we praise God that salvation means. We don't end up in the smoking section. But the, main, the part of the benefit package was the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit inside of us. However, just because he's inside doesn't mean that we always activate and release him and allow him to work in our lives. Oh, God, the Holy Spirit works in Christians. But this is what we're talking about. The Holy Spirit lives what? Through belief. Please read this. This we talked about this verse last week, and I want to go and introduce something new in just a minute. John 14, 10, Newton and NLT, let's read this together. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak, Jesus says, are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work where? Through me. All right. So, uh, the, Galatians two twenty. This is our, our verse before. Let's read this together. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I that live, but Christ living in me. Now, this is now this this, this if, if there's a verse if there's a if there's a slide to symbolize the entire one. This is it right here. Let's read this together. Christ gave His life for us. He gave, gives his life to us. The way and the truth and the life lives in us. Come on now. And he lives his life through us. This is what I'm saying. I'm telling you where the disconnect is between what we see and what we say. Is that we've been trying to live the Christian life in our own power. We've been trying to live the Christian life in our own determination. We've been trying to live the Christian life in our own self-control. And we don't have the power. We don't have the self-control. We don't have the determination to live a victorious life. But when we let the Holy Spirit live through us. We can start loving the unlovable. We can start going forth when we're ready to give up. We can have victory in the midst of the battle. We can have triumph in the midst of trouble. When we now allow the Holy Spirit to live through us, all he wants to do is live his life through us. He wants your people on your job when everybody else is down to know the light of Christ is in me right now and shining through it. He wants something at your home that you left in bed. When you go back home, you walk in so much glory. You walk up in there and say, what happened? Because the Holy Spirit is living through us. He wants us to see. He wants us to live his life through us. That's doing it good just to have so many Got to allow yourself to activate yes. and allow him to work yes. through us in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God one more hand out of praise in Jesus' name. So now, yes. I'm going to live. So God lives through me. Yes. So now, I'm going to get out the way so God can have his way. So now, I'm going to trust God to live an abundant life through me. I'm not going to keep trying to do it by myself and do it on my own and by my own willpower and my self-control and determination. I'm going to step back and allow the Holy Spirit to live. do live. So God lives through me. So now in my flesh, I want to snap her. But now through the Holy Spirit, I can hug her. Why? Because I'm allowed the Holy Spirit to work through me. The flesh always going to be fleshy. 
But I have to allow, I have to yield to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. I have to yield to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives. So we ought to live like the Holy Spirit is working in us and through us as well. So let me go back on this now. So that this is this is the point. Let's read this together. When believers submit, surrender, and succumb to the power of the Holy Spirit. When we get out of the way, keep going, read now. He, not it, Holy Spirit, lives an abundant, amazing, anointed Christian life through belief. He is not, I'm telling you right now, God, the Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. If we are driving, he is not going to take the wheel. Y'all always hear Sister Amy say when, when, her, when, her wife, when, her, when her daughter gets to her, Jesus take the wheel. So, but she has to allow Jesus to take the wheel. The Holy Spirit is not going to be allowed. He's going to take your wheel. You know, we have to allow him to take the wheel. What are we saying here? So why are we not living this abundant life? This is what we talked about last week. Because who is sitting on the throne of our lives? Who's in control? This is really where most believers are. We got saved. Holy Spirit sit out there somewhere. That this is, oh my gosh, and what happens, believers sometimes are praying selfish prayers and put in Jesus' name at the end. Think it's going to obligate Jesus to have to move on our behalf instead of saying, God, at this point, I want your will to be done. I, at this point, God, I want that, I want this, I want this, uh, 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 yeah, in Jesus' name. And so he's on the outside. And as a result, we have all this unfulfillment, all this fear, all this lack of purpose. But when Jesus, the Holy Spirit, glory to God, is on the throne of our lives, when I dethrone myself so that the Holy Spirit is enthroned, then at that point I can have some peace. At that point I have love. At that point I have joy. At that point I have justice. At that point I have no fear. Because now I'm allowing him. I'm yielding the throne to him. I'm surrendering to him. I'm submitting to him. I'm, su I, I'm succumbing to him. As long as I'm on the throne. How many times have you been on the throne to mess up? Yes. Every time. But every, whenever he's on the throne, he can, he's always worked it out. And here's the point. But the last thing who's in the driver's seat of our lives, read this with me from last week. Put God in the driver's seat of your life. Because anything under his control would never be out of control. Put your kid under his control. Never out of control. Put your finances out under his control. Glory. Never out of control. Put your fears under his control. Never out of control. Put your worries under his control. Never out of control. Put your doubt under his control. Never out of control. Whatever you put under his control will never be out of control. The only time it gets out of control is when we when this happens. We're on the throne. As long as we're on the throne, expect all this to happen. So now in the battle, the battle, the battle, I have to say about this one. So in the midst of all this, I don't think they got to the question. I know you didn't. Y'all yeah, yeah, been leaving up here. Now you know he was told, told oh, we had to see him, right? He was, and he already said shalom. So why do these believers still sin? I can see it at the very end. Let me talk about shalom now. I still got some blank notes on my page. So that is, why do we still sin? So here's the point about why we, why we still sin. Uh, this is the, oh, this is the, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's, let's read this together. Believers have not embraced what happened to the root that produced the same fruit. Oh. We haven't embraced what happened to the root that produced the sin fruit. You know that any fruit has come from a root. It is coming food line. You know that right. It was on the vine somewhere. And, and the fruit comes from the root. So we have not embraced or understood what happened to the root that caused us to have the fruit of sin. In a, in, in, what happens here? In any tree, you see you, this beautiful tree out here. You see what's going on above the ground but may not know what's going on below the ground. So what happens here? The root below the ground will produce the fruit above the ground. Isn't that right? Yes. 
You got a limited